what's up guys um, I thought I'd do a few things differently um, for this video uh, mostly because I really need to get around to making more YouTube videos um, I've got so much footage I've got so many ideas I just need to actually produce um, but yeah I'm gonna be completely honest with you like I have been forever I hope um, right now I am almost finished actually and I'm editing a wedding shoot that I did uh, a couple of weekends ago and uh, I told the couple I told this couple that I was gonna finish it by um, Sunday uh, it's Friday night and I've got about maybe a hundred photos to go so easy um, I've culled them, I've cropped them, I just need to tinker a little bit of color grading and light fixing. So it's pretty much done. But uh, it was a hundred photos about an hour and a half ago. So realistically I should be done and finished and I should be asleep. But no, my head's getting distracted by something. And uh, I'm just going to really express exactly every single thought that I'm feeling right now and thinking. Uh, I'm going to wind it back six months ago. Yeah, about six months ago. Um, I was at school. And I was starting to really make a little bit of a, uh, a movement with my photography, with my tours. Uh, Nick Buchanan and myself started a portrait walk thing and I had a couple of weddings under my belt and those weddings there's a bit of movement from that as well momentum and I started to get bookings I was posting every day on my Instagram I had a goal that I needed to have 999 posts um, by the 1st of October because the 1st of October was when I was going to be in America, in New York City, in Central Park, on one knee, proposing to the love of my life. And that video was going to be my thousandth post. That was probably the biggest accountability I've ever put on myself thus far. And, you know, like... There's been other moments throughout my life that I needed to pull my head in and do things, but that was probably the longest kind of throughout a period of time. Now, I achieved that. First six months of the year, I was $16,000 in debt because in 2018, I decided to take about five overseas holidays. I decided to upgrade my camera. I decided to get a lot of camera equipment because I had the money to finally do it. But then I overextended and then got into debt. Got into interest-free loans, um, cards, credit cards and stuff. I wasn't silly. I kept an eye on it, but I was still in debt. So I went to Japan in 2019 yeah January last year and at the end of January at the end of the trip I was $16,000 in debt and I was really driven to take photos I was really excited to have a job a permanent job uh, every fortnight a good chunk of money is coming into my account but I also wanted to go to America and propose to Sabine I knew that at the end of January. I knew that well before January, but very, very cement concrete sort of stuff for uh, at the end of January. After Japan, I was like, I'm going to ask her to marry me. So anyway, then what happened was I was like, right, there are going to be a few conditions where I'm going to need to I'm going to need to fulfill a few things in order for us to be able to get by in America and actually have a good time. Firstly, I need to get rid of debt. 
I didn't want to go to America with still some debt and probably more debt at the end of the trip. So that was the first thing I wanted to do. I failed. But I only failed by one month. I gave myself until mid-year to pay it off. And I had done it by um, the end of July. 30th of July, I remember paying off my final piece. What I also did was I sold my car. My car was a probably probably one of the biggest regrets that I ever had when I grew, was growing up. I bought a uh, Commodore V8 VESS. Back then it was flexing. I'm not going to BS you guys, it was to flex. And then I soon realized that no one cared. So then I was just like, damn, all right. I've got this, <laughs> the microphones there, by. I've got this um, debt. I've got this car debt. It's big and it's, it's getting interest. So what I did was I paid it off on time every month. Um, sometimes my mum would help me when I first moved out of home, but I had debt. I had debt for about eight years. Um, I could have been using that money for so many better things. However, the one big positive I took out of it was it taught me how to save and it taught me not to buy dumb things because I had a debt. <laughs> now, there are some people in this world, actually a lot of people, who um, have debt and still buy dumb things. So... They're getting into more debt, and they're not um, achieving their goals uh, because they're stuck. They have debt to pay. So anyway, I paid off my car last year. I got rid of a big $16,000 debt, and then it was the end of July. End of July. August, September, October. So I had three months to save up for America. Now, my biggest achievement last year, apart from obviously um, getting engaged to um, my lovely Beyonce, was the fact that when I still had that debt, I started saving anyway. So it was like a money comes in, here's to some debt, here's to some bills and food to get by. Not a, not a lot. I stopped buying sneakers. I have over 60 pairs of sneakers and I didn't buy a single pair um, last year. Not one. And prior to that, I probably bought about maybe whew, 8 to 12 per year, give or take. Not one. I changed my priorities. I changed my mindset. And so then October came around. And I think we managed to collectively save about $15,000. Majority of that was me um, because Sabine was also getting rid of debt. And she was motivated from me to get rid of her debt. And we both got rid of our debts together. And now we're debt free. We had an amazing holiday. And we weren't poor people. We weren't like scrounging for loose change towards the end of our trip um, and you know uh, couldn't wait to get on the plane to get home because we had no money left about halfway through the trip and this is where my maths teaching comes in handy I guess like thinking in my head projecting like the way we're going about things where we're soon going to run out of money and I'm predicting probably earlier than the end of the trip which is not where you want to be. And um, we, we did have a payment coming in. We'll get both on salaries, so we're going to get payments in. And um, I said to Sabine, I was like, hey, uh, go for gold. However, we need to chill out for a little bit. We need to turn, the, turn it down on the spending every day. Um, my savings for that trip was to pay for the ring to put on her finger. Now the ring to put on her finger didn't actually cost that much. The physical ring didn't cost me that much. It cost me less than 300 Australian dollars. And you're thinking, Seb, you cheapskate. A ring for under $300? An engagement ring? Are you, are you kidding? Are you crazy? Firstly, 
before you start punch, p passing judgment. Firstly, Sabine doesn't wear jewellery. No. Secondly, she told me, talked about it. She goes, Seb, don't waste your money on a ring whenever you, whenever the time comes to propose. <laughs> Bit cheeky, I know. And thirdly, we'd rather use that money for holidays. So I kept that. Kept that. And then I used that and then sent that off and to the universe and said to the universe, hey, this is what's going to happen. 2019, I'm going to get rid of my debt. I'm going to save up for America. I'm going to have an amazing time in America. I'm going to propose to her at the end of the trip. Now, the advice, one of my good mates from school, shout outs to Todd. And I told him about my idea and he was one of the only people I told. Um, another guy called Dan. Shout outs to Dan. If you're watching, mate, let me know. Todd told me, Sev, don't you dare propose to her at the end of the trip. You're going to be tired. You're going to be groggy. You're going to be annoyed. You're both going to be just a little bit, eh. Do it on day one. Do it on day one. So rock up. Obviously, we rocked up the night before. Got to the hotel room, fell asleep. Sweet, we're in America. We're in New York. Woo! Then, morning came. Went down to Central Park. Did our thing. I proposed. She said yes. We're engaged. Good thing. And that's my 2019 tick. Now, why am I telling you this such such a thorough story? How, why am I telling going such depths? You're probably getting bored right now, right? Cool story, bro. And the reason is, I wanted to go real real deep into it because I wanted to tell you that it takes it takes time to achieve your goals. And if you really want to achieve them, you're going to have to work for them. I got rid of my debt. Sabine got rid of her debt. We saved up 15 grand for America. And going back to that time when we were a little bit uh, uh, worried, well, I was a little bit like, ooh, we might run out, out of money on this trip here. I said to Sabine, let's turn it down. And let's aim to have $1,000 left over by the time we get on the plane. Long story short, oh, thank God they said, we failed. We failed by $300. So we got on the plane with $700 still in our uh, savings for America bank account. Is it really a loss? No. Other times, and many people, this, this happens to many people, they get to zero. And then they get their credit cards out days before the trip ends. And they're like, ah, stuff it, YOLO. Now, I'm not demonizing that. You live your best life. If you can afford it, cool. But it's that mindset change that I'm mentioning and I'm talking about. That mindset change that if you really want to make a difference, you really got to stick to it. You got to really be, be critical and you got to be rough. You got to, not rough. You got to be um, strict on yourself. So now we're in 2020. I I don't have a clear goal by the end of the year. I realised. And the goals that I've set out so far in 2020, today, today is the 24th of January, so we're three and a bit weeks in to the new year. One of my goals for the end of January was to have um, a $500 retainer, so make $500 per week from my clients ongoing. Now, I told that to the universe because I wrote it down and I put a specific date in there. Why I say this is a lot of you guys, especially you young young people, um, you want, I don't know, popularity. You want, let's say, you want to be famous on TikTok. When do you want to be famous by? How many followers do you want by? How many people do you want messaging you daily saying how much of a difference you make to their lives because of the content you create? Have you ever thought about it like that? Well, if you haven't, then why are you making TikTok videos? What's the reason you want to be popular? What's the reason you want to be famous? Is it to spread spread a good message? That's my message. I want to I want to give value out. I want to share the my experiences with you guys and tell you what I've learned from them like I am in this video. 
I want to lead by example. I'm not going to shove anything down your throat and force you to be like, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. I'll always try to deliver it to you in a suggestive manner, which means, hey, have you thought about doing it like this? Maybe you can try like this. This is how I did it. Maybe you can think about doing it in a similar fashion. That's not up to me to decide, though. It's up to you. Now, if you want something to happen to you, in a good way, obviously, like say you want to get better at football, maybe you want to um, get in the Colts squad. You're 15 years old or 16 years old, and you want to get in the development squad at footy or whatever sport you play. You want to get into a, a professional league. Or maybe you're a student, you want to get into the academic class. Or maybe you're a student and you want to get better grades. Maybe you're a uh, not so good student and you want to figure out the best pathway to get out of school, to be able to get a trade, something you're actually going to enjoy because you're more hands-on. Has society and environment, science, it's not your thing. You want to go and you wish every day was woodwork day and you can make things. But how do you get to that spot? Well, you got to tell the universe. you got to tell the universe what you want. But here's the kicker. And here's the point to this whole video. Now, I apologize it took this long. But if you're still here with me, let me know in the comments. Message me. Tell me that you got this far. But here's the big kicker of the video. If you tell the universe what you want, write it down, set a date, it may be realistic, it may be unrealistic. You may not reach it. Don't get disappointed if you don't. Maybe you've uh, overextended. Um, but if you tell the universe what you want, and also you tell everybody else, that's how I do it, keep yourself accountable, you're going to start doing things that will move you towards achieving those things that you told the universe that you wanted or you wanted to achieve. So let's let's paint a picture. I love painting pictures. I love taking photos. You're in year eight, and by the end of year eight, you want to get good grades. You want to get better grades. You uh, low C grade student, right? Now, why I say year eight is because I one of my um, main classes last year was a year eight class. Shout outs to my year eight class last year, by the way. You know who you are. We did some goal setting at the start of this, the year, and some of them would be saying, oh, this is dumb. Oh, why are we goal setting? But these guys still did it. They still did it. A lot of their answers, a lot of their things that they would write were very similar to do with school. One of the questions was, what's something you want to achieve in school? That's my dog snoring. And majority of them said they want to get better grades. So cliche, I know. But then it's like, what do you do to get those good grades? You tell the universe, then you've got to set a pathway. You've got to set stepping stones. How do you get from a C to a B? What subject do you need to work on? What do you need to do to be able to move forward? And this, this is across all um, grades, by the way. So this could be my first... Uh, video for surviving high school, surviving any year group that you may be worried about. Shout outs to any year 12s listening. Do not complain that the grades aren't happening for you. Make yourself happen towards the grades. Does that make sense? So be realistic. Don't assume that the teacher is just going to fail you because you don't get along. Research. Ask them. Don't be stubborn. Just because you don't get along with your teacher, don't just automatically disregard yourself thinking that they're not going to help you. They will. It's because you don't go to them and ask for their help that they may be a little bit more quiet towards you, especially when you get older. Now, here's why. Here's my theory. Anyway, as you get older, you'll find that you're more and more alone. Now, it's not a bad thing, because there's a lot of introverts out there that are very successful. 
and I'm not demonizing any introverts, by the way, just in case you get the wrong idea, because, you know, this is all just coming out of my head right now. The best way to succeed in anything is to learn how to do it. <laughs> learn how to do it in a way that you understand. Now, this, this, this applies to every bit of school work you can do. So what's the best way that you can do it? Now, as a student, you may not know because you're young. You haven't experienced enough life to be able to know that. As a teacher, it is my job to stimulate your mind, to throw out different ways that you can be like, oh, I understand Pythagoras now. Well, when am I going to use it? I don't know, but I get it. I get that A, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Hey, cool, you move on. But um, you need to figure out the best way you learn. Now, don't start complaining that your school sucks. Don't start complaining that your teacher sucks. Don't start complaining that you're in a poor area and that your parents don't care and that um, you're at a disadvantage. Well, guess what? If you're complaining, you'll always at a disadvantage because you're complaining that you're not actually moving you've you maybe you've spoken to the universe and said I want to get better grades but I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna wait for the universe to come to me that's not how the universe works no sir the universe works for you if you start to move towards what you said you wanted to do and then it'll start working for you. It's as simple as that. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes grit. Look up grit. Look up the word grit. G-R-I-T. And if it sounds like it's a too hard work, then find something that you're passionate about. Let's go back to me for a second. Let's go back to where we're at. So last year, Finished my holiday, so this is end of October now. Went back and uh, had a few weddings to do. Went back and had a few photo shoots. Had to finish school off. And I made the decision to say, yep, this is it. I'm uh, calling it quits on my teaching uh, for now. Gone on hiatus, so don't know when I'm going to come back. But I'm going to take 12 months to do my photography, videography, wedding stuff, business stuff, development. Maybe get somewhere with TikTok. Maybe maybe this video will go viral and maybe everybody will want me to make a book and whatever. You know what? I'm enjoying the journey. But for me, I'm, I've said to the universe, hey, I want to make $500 a week, which is $1,000 every two weeks, which is only half of what I make as a school teacher. Now, do I need to make as much as I did as a school teacher to get by? The answer is no, because last year I managed to save money. I managed to put away money to, to get rid of debt. I managed to save money to put into America, and I still had money to, left over to pay the bills. So clearly, $1,000 a fortnight is fine enough for me. But here's my next big accountability step. And I love it. I love it. And it's the same thing that was last year. Sabine. She comes into the picture again. So we both decided to call it quits indefinitely on our careers. Sabine didn't want to be a manager anymore in her retail job. So she became casual so she can study psychology full time. She's starting this year. And that means she's going to get less shifts. That means she's going to make less money than last year. So that means my $1,000 a fortnight that I was always going to just get by on means that may not be enough. Is that scary? Man, maybe I should have waited. Maybe I should have just kept being a school teacher this year and we would have been sweet. But the thing is, when you have distractions 
and I mean serious distractions, not just your phone's vibrating in your pocket and you're wondering who's your Snapchat buddy. The thing is, when you get distracted by something all the time that you love, that you love to do, it's your passion. And again, I'm not talking about answering your phone. It doesn't count. If you want to do something and it's itching you and it's distracting you from something that you're already doing and all you can think about is that other thing, you go chase it. You go chase it. And if you set a goal to complete something before the end of the year, but you're getting distracted by this new thing that you love so much more, it's okay to switch. It's okay to switch. Now, bringing you guys back in as a student, as a young person, and this technically applies to everybody, but I'll go into that later. As a young person, you're living at home still. You're not paying the bills. You're not paying tax. You have all this time to try everything, as many things as you can. I want to play sport. Ah, oh, I suck. Did I give it my best shot? Nah. Am I really that interested? Nah. I like to do this. I want to do this. I want to code. I want to make apps. I want to learn how to make apps. For example, you study. You go on the computer. You go on YouTube. All the books. And you find that you're obsessed with it. Obsessed. It's a good word. In my books, it's a good word. You're obsessed with it. You want to do it every day. You, you just enjoy it. All of a sudden, you're good at it. You're getting better at it. And that's all you want to do. Make an aim. What can you do with it? Go to uni, study more with it. Or start coding. Asking if anyone wants your services. You find yourself at 16 years of age and you're coding for some, um, some local company that is finding you absolutely gifted. You finish your school days. You know, you get through year 12. You're not going to be the best at school. That's fine. You're so interested in coding. You've got a gift, whatever it may be. You finish school and you start coding for that company and they pay you so much money because you're so good at it. And they, they've, they see value in you. It could happen. At the same time though, it may not happen if you didn't try enough things. Now, I'm not saying that channeling your energy into one idea is bad. I'm not saying that you should leave school or whatever. I'm saying that you need to make sure that you taste everything that you can. To, to, to know what you're into. I've been tasting for the last 29 years. The most amount of tasting I've done was in my 20s. This last decade. I'm in my, excuse me. I'm in my final year of my 20s. And I've gone from being a lifeguard to now being a full-time photographer. And in the middle, I did uni. And then towards the end, I've got to finally got a job. I'm a teacher, full-time qualified teacher, and I've got my um, permanency. I'm sorted. But my distraction came through last year, photography. I couldn't get enough of it. At school, at recess and lunchtime, I was thinking about shooting models and how I was going to edit the photos, doing a wedding shoot, how I'm going to edit the wedding photos, videography. Andrew Murphy, shout-outs to you. Tim, shout outs to you, mate. Nick, shout outs to you, mate. You three boys, I'm gonna tell you, made me, and Chris, Chris from down south, shout outs to you, man. You guys got me into video, and I'm just like, man, I love this. This is my thing. Now, I think I've gone on, on a tangent a few times now. And I hope you're getting something out of this. So uh, the, the whole point of this is it's unscripted. I don't have anything written down. This is just coming out of my head right now. It's going to be a podcast too, so have a listen if you want. Um, these wedding photos right now, I love it. I love it. But the thing that's distracting me is making TikTok videos on the phone. On the phone. And now I'm thinking, and this is me telling the universe for the first time, because it's been in my head for the last few weeks now. And shout out to Andrew Murphy again, because recently he's announced that he wants to be uh, doing YouTube full time. I've always thought that being on YouTube, being on TV, being on something 
where someone else can watch you was the coolest thing in the world. I think going back to when I was like 12 or 13, we played this game on uh, on webs on uh, online, and it had uh, uh, like a DJ, like a radio station thing where where you can where people um, could set up their computers to play music and talk. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. Me and my friend Luke, um, my childhood friend Luke, shout outs to Luke. We uh, both listened. Um, he he. Uh, we figured out how to make a radio station. We made our own radio station. We had like two listeners. It was the coolest thing. I think at one point I had fourteen listeners. That was the coolest thing. Best thing in the world. And now I have an average of eighty to one hundred people streaming into my lives every time I host a game show, quiz show, on Sunday Mondays. Man, my twelve-year-old self would be like, "Dude, that's so cool. That's so cool." And some of you 12-year-olds out there, shout-outs to you guys, are probably like, man, he's so cool, he's doing that, man, I wish I want to do that. And my 12-year-old self, he was absolutely, he's in the same boat. And you know what? One of my other biggest regrets I realize now is I didn't let that 12-year-old flourish. I went into the school system and focused at school. I'm not saying school's bad. Not saying school's bad, but I focused more on school, and I'm saying 100% of the time, give or take with a bit of footy, because that was my thing. But I stopped with the the radio stuff. I was taking photos well before 2015. I was making videos as well. I had the crappiest little camera back then. It looked like you were filming on a calculator, and I made the videos back then and I remember putting them on YouTube I don't know if they exist or not I think I deleted them I wish I didn't because they're pretty <laughs> hey might find them anyway that was like 2006 and I wasn't 12 in 2006 I was like 15, 16 I think maths anyway um, when I did that it was the funnest thing put a little music behind it it was the coolest but I didn't progress because no one pushed me. And I didn't push myself. And I'm not saying you need someone to push you. You need to push yourself. Now, if you find this video valuable and you get something out of it and this is motivation for you, I've had so many people who already messaged me on Instagram and all the social media channels saying, you motivate me so much. I'm drawing because of you. I'm taking photos because of you. I'm, I'm wanting to do better at school because of you. That's, that's amazing. And the thing is, you need to actually do it now. If you're motivated, fantastic, you're welcome. But you need to do it now. Prove to me. Prove to me that you can do it. I'm going to draw a picture of you, Sev. Okay, do it. I'm keen to see. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. You want to make a montage video of me? Absolutely. Keen to see. I'm keen to see the next 20 montage videos you make of or whoever you want to make. Do it, though. All right? You want to make music? You want to be a producer? You want to be a rapper? You want to be a singer? Make some music. Do it every day. Show me that you've done 20 different tracks over the next 20 to 25 days or however many days you can possibly do it in. Show me. I want to see it. Prove it. Prove to me that you have the obsession to tell to the universe, I want this, but also say, I want this and I'm going to get it. Because at the end of the day, it's not you asking for the universe what you want. It's you telling the universe what you're going to get. And that's, I feel, the difference. If you tell the universe, hey, I'm going to be a famous TikToker and I'm going to get sponsors and I'm going to get deals and signings or whatever, be the next Jojo Siwa or whatever her name is, shout outs to Demi. Show the universe. That's all I'm saying. For me, what am I going to show the universe this year? Well, my weddings. I have failed this month with my goal. Now here's here's where the universe, excuse me, sit properly now. Here's where the universe comes into play for me and teaches me something. This is what I've learned over the last few days from the uh, inspiring words of Cameron Branch. Shout out to Cameron Branch. 
I told the universe at the start of the year that I wanted to make $500 a month, uh, a week as a retainer. I failed because the retainers aren't there. I don't have someone or some people paying me collectively $500 a week. However, I had another goal for my weddings. My goal was to book two weddings a month. Two weddings. Now, how weddings work is, let's say a wedding is about $2,000. I charge a bit more than that, but $2,000. Some weddings are booked months from now. Some weddings are booked even next year. I have one next year as late as, I think, September. But my policy is 50%, and I give them a little bit of leeway, but a minimum of $500 deposit per booking. And I said to myself, my minimum is two a month. So that gets me to a thousand dollars per month, which is half. If you let's pretend every month is February and they all have 28 days and it's not a leap year, two weddings a month will get me halfway to my goal, technically. Now, in the last six days, I've booked eight weddings. So that's four months I've ticked off fantastic now here's the best bit because it's eight weddings and on average all of them are over five hundred dollars um, deposit each eight weddings into five hundred dollars is four grand yeah four grand four thousand dollars I wanted $500 a week retainer by the end of January. I've made $4,000 from the deposits so far. $4,000 divided into um, four weeks is $1,000 per week. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I am pretty much on par with my school teaching salary and it hasn't even finished January yet. So what is the universe telling me? The universe is telling me that you're not going to succeed exactly the way you want to sometimes and that's what I feel like I've done. I'm not getting retainers because maybe the retainers aren't for me. Maybe that's the universe helping me saying, hey, that's not the way that you're going to go about it because that's not you. See what happens. See if the universe is right. Maybe they are, whoever it is. So technically, my goals are sorted for the next two months. Um, I've met my quota, personal quota. And I've also matched my salary for the month of January which I'm still getting paid for because I'm on technically on holiday still from school. So I'm going into February and March all sorted. I can just sit there and be like, sweet, sorted for two months. But here's the next bit. Do I just sit there and let it roll and let it happen and just relax? God, no. This is when I work harder. It's still day one for me. Tomorrow will be day one. The next day will be day one. It will be forever day one for me because I don't want to ever be um, listening to all the applauds, all the accolades. Sam, you did it. Oh my God, you're so awesome. You got such drive. It's nice to hear that. And please feel free to message me that every day. <laughs> but I'm already looking at the next thing. I'm, I, that's me five minutes ago. Sweet. Fantastic, Sam. Let's move on. And that's the drive. Now, going back to these weddings, I've still got 100 photos to go. I've still been talking to you for almost 40 minutes nonstop. These photos I need to do. Why haven't I done them yet? Maybe that's me figuring out my next obsession. And then going back to Andrew Murphy. Maybe I want to make more TikTok videos and really hit it and really strike a chord and get famous from that. But because I'm saying maybe, it's because I don't know yet. And there is a bit of uncertainty as well. I don't want to just jump into that world yet. Because I'm still enjoying this wedding world. YouTube could be a thing. 
I love making videos. I do. But I need to channel my energy into one specific thing at a time. And for now, that's weddings. Because I still enjoy it a lot. So much. I love to engage with the, the bride-to-be. Get to know the husband. Get to know the family. Um, talk about their day and how it's going to pan out. Most of the time, they're getting married for the first time. So I'm like, hey, did you know this? Like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I get to be part of the day. The editing part is a bit more tricky. Obviously, that's in my own time, and that's the bit that I have to do. But today was a good day because I edited these photos, and I'm very happy with them. These are some of my best photos I've ever edited. And I still stopped halfway and decided to make TikTok videos instead and talk to my fans and, and message, message, uh, reply to their um, messages. So why? What, what am I doing? What am I into? What's my thing? What's my aim? The only thing I'm going to tell you about that though, for now, as it's coming to me, is I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying the roller coaster. So we'll see what happens in the next few weeks, days, months, years, decades. But we're going to see what happens next because that's really the thing that's I'm most focused on. Not in five years' time. TikTok may not be around in five years' time. I might have zero interest in weddings in five years' time. What happens next is what matters the most. So, hope you enjoyed my little rant, story, uh, analogies, um, bringing it into your context of the world. And I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, I'd love to hear a message from me on Instagram. You know where to reach me? at Sevspics. This has been a really uh, good session because there's been no there's been no script. I'm not reading out of anything. I'm not pausing. I'm not even stuttering that much, I feel. I'm not saying um as much either. So I'm pretty proud of that. I'm getting better. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it too. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. And as always, good thanks. And have a nice day.